Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So, last place we left off, we had just gotten into the gotten into the control center of the Rhinestone Dish, and we had found a hidden passage. So, where will this secret door lead to? Maybe, perhaps, greater answers as to the mystery of Alex's revival. <laughs> I love Helen being all mysterious and building up everything. Enhancing the tension. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and just jump right back in. Merry Christmas Eve and Happy Holidays, guys. Let's just jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> I start to move towards the newly opened passage. With a growl, look at steps in front of me. No, we have seen enough. What? No, this is more important than the damn Automux. He draws himself up to his full height, looming over me. Alex, I have never seen anything like this. It is unsafe. This is not the task. This place could tell us something about me. This place bears the mark of demons. We are digging too deep. There will be consequences to... You promised! He blinks at me, startled. You promised to help me find answers if I agree to be your acolyte. There, there, are, there are answers here! Logan opens his mouth to argue, but the words stick. He looks away for a moment. He knows I'm right. I did promise this, but I did not expect. Let's just see what's down here, please? His ears flick nervously. Loken, come on, forget the auto monks. This is why we're really here, isn't it? He growls again. Fine, but you will stay behind me. We will not dig too deep. I let him go first. Seems like a fair compromise. Maybe he senses danger that I just can't. It doesn't matter, danger or not, I'm going down there. Cautiously, Loken and I head through the secret door. The room is lined with racks of advanced computers, beautifully stored and organized behind glass containers. Even with hundreds of years' worth of dust collection, it still seems crystal clean down here. Tiny lights flicker on each of the devices, and they whir with life. I press my face to the glass, but can't make out what their function is. These controlling panel boxes are different to those above. Explain. It's preserved Zephyr technology, but it's really advanced, like, on another level. Wait, I've got something. They're data banks. They're storing information. Hundreds of exabytes worth. Uh, what's an exabyte? It's more data than a hundred thousand human brains. Byte says they're storing data, lots of data. You're talking nonsense. So, um, my people had a language called binary digital code. It meant any information could be stored as ones and zeros. I stopped myself when I see the blank, confused look on his face. Um, they contain information and memories. They may contain your memories? That's not quite how it works. Did the Ottomunks know about this place? I do not think so. Perhaps they suspected the memory boxes were here but could not find them as you and Byte have. Byte, can you read any of this data? Possibly, if there's a way for me to... If, if there's a way for me to download it. Maybe there's another switch to interface with. Have a look around. We scour the chamber, desperately searching for something we can make use of. Loken glances nervously at the exit every few moments, as though expecting trouble. After a few minutes of looking around... Alex! He grabs my attention and gestures for me to join him at the far end of the room. I jog over. Around the wall is another handprint recognition lock, like the one upstairs. They're identical. There is another one of these. Husky reaches out and touches it. Nothing happens. I think only Byte can get these to work. Hmm. We've seen enough. We have returned to the Automunks and informed them of this discovery. The task is complete. He gestures for me to follow him, instead of reach up towards the panel. No! Logan tugs me away, clutching me by the shoulders. Hey, what? I almost topple backwards into him. We do not know what will happen. You are digging too deep. We might not get this chance again. I will not lose you. What? Why would you... L I'll be fine, Loken. No, Alex, we will find another way. Let me go, Loken. I slap the mask of the massive husky off me and back away. My whole species is dead, Loken. All of them. Anyone I might have loved is gone. Nobody even remembers what I am. I don't even know what I am. Don't you dare try and stop me. I glare at him furiously, frustrated that he doesn't understand how much this, uh, how much this means to me. Walking through the skeletons of my entire society has been a lot to take in. I'm angry and saddened. But, Alex, you are small. He looks away from me, his face tense with concern. I take a breath to compose myself. I don't know why he's so scared that something will happen with me. I don't know why he cares so much. He, after only three days. I gently reach over to pet his arm, wishing there were more I could do to com combat his anxiety. His tail flicks, but his expression remains strained. You're not going to lose another acolyte, I promise. I need to do this. 
He goes silent. After a moment, he opens his mouth to say something, but nothing comes out. He relents and steps away. Nodding to him in thanks, I sl I step over to the pad on the wall. Ready, Bite? Ready! Touch the panel. I gingerly, I reach forward and place my hand against the panel. <coughs> the last thing I remember before blacking out is screaming. My body burned like it had been set aflame. And Loken, I remember hearing Loken yelling my name. I felt him grab me as I fell back. Then nothing. Did you have to do that, Bite? Nothing. There's... Nothing. Just smothering darkness. Bite? What happened? No reply. Bite! Alex, I hear you. I'm over here! Help! What's wrong? I can't do it. I try to swim towards his voice. Alex, here! I need you. I'm trying! He's getting louder. I'm closer to him. It's too much. Too much what? God, what the fuck is that noise? I can't hold it. Just stay there, I'm coming! Yeah! God, what's happening to us? Bite, where are you? The download. I can't stop it. Too much data. Make it stop. Hey, look at me. Just breathe. I don't have lungs, dipshit. And just focus on the small task. Only this and... Don't you give me that Black Runner crap. Ah, it hurts! Slow down, Bite. I I take it one piece at a time. Do the small task, buddy. Oh, okay. I I'll try. Mm -hmm. Gah! Wait, I think something's happening. Yes, it's working. Keep going. What? No, it's gone. Bite. Whatever you just did, do it again. Mm -hmm. There, it's back. What the hell is that? Can you not ask questions? I'm trying to concentrate here, dickhead. Right, sorry. I think I... Yes, I have it. Ah! Oh. I'm trying to save the data, but I can't hold it. What's Soul Creek? Is this a message? Mmm, too much. Too much. Hey, stay with me. I can't. We have to... Ah! Bite! Bite, where are you? I'm here. I'm okay. What just happened? I copied the data from the rhinestone dish. I've never seen anything like it. What the hell was in there? It's some kind of algorithm. Algorithm? For what? I have no idea. It's clearly been written for a very specific purpose, but I can't help but I can't figure out what. How come? I only have half the program. The rest of the data is saved somewhere else. It doesn't take me long to make the connection. What about the other satellite station? You said it's linked to the rhinestone dish. They both came online when we woke up. Oh, you might be right. The other half of the algorithm must be there. Could you complete the program if you get the missing data? I think so. Just give me time to analyze the data we already have first. We should get an idea of what it of what it does before we go looking. I can't believe it. We have something. Bite! A real clue! We have a shot! Whatever happens, Alex, we can't tell the Autumnks about this. They're going to want this data for themselves. They'd want you for themselves. Yeah, agreed. It seems like the kind of thing they'd go crazy over. What happened by, to me, by the way? The last thing I remember was... Oh crap, Loken, is he okay? The data current knocked you unconscious, but I can wake you up now. Do it. We left him all alone in there. All right, hold tight. <laughs> Alex? What? Coming into my senses, I feel Loken's, st Loken's staunch arms around me. He's carrying me, his coarse outfit rustling against my face. Alex! There's a rush of nauseating movement, and the husky delicately lowers me down. Wet grass and cold, sharp air brushes my bare skin. I wearily opened my eyes to see a familiar bipad gazing down at me, my head cradled in his huge paw. Behind me, a black night sky is almost obscured by dark clouds. What? How long, how long was I out? Where are we? I try to sit up, but the world is spinning. I feel my eyes cross in their sockets. Stay still. It is far beyond midnight. That long, huh? Loken kneels back as I try to sit up again, his, his huge paw supporting my shoulders. <sighs> I feel like a stomach. my stomach's about to crawl up my throat. You are okay. Yeah, I... Abruptly, Loken's paw grazes the side of my face. He cups my chin and turns my face up to his. Our eyes meet. His are fully... His are full of barely disguised... Con his are full of barely disguised concern. He's really distressed. I could not tell if... I blink at him. His paw moves to my cheek. I feel his fingers flex as my face is nestled into his paw pads. What happened? 
You touched the wall. You yelled in pain and fell. I caught you. I cannot tell if because you were not breathing, but you never do. I did not mean to scare you. Uh, sorry. He takes a breath, clenching and unclenching his other paw. I feel terrible. Poor guy must have been really freaked out. Hey! I don't know if it's because I'm still a little delirious, but I instinctively bring my hand up to his and clasp it warmly. I'm okay. He doesn't reply. His face is frozen in apathy. I'm fine. Look, and we have news. But I discovered something amazing. He doesn't even acknowledge me. Something isn't right. He's still... He's so still. He's staring into the distance. What's wrong? He doesn't answer. I look around. The mountains seem, fami the mountains seem familiar. Look, and are we still in the black zone? He shakes his head and opens his mouth to speak, but says nothing. Fuck! Run! 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 Then I hear it, far in the distance, in the dark mountains beyond the black zones, an obscure, inscrutable bellow, something far away. It permeates my mind, and my heart clenches. Logan lets go of my cheek, his fist tightening with worry. What was that? They came for us. My chest tightens. But when you touched the wall, the lights went out. The rhinestone dish became dormant once again, and they came. I've never seen so many. The black zones are provoked. I took you and ran. I ran for hours. They hunted me for hours. I... He puts a heavy breath out of his cheeks in anguish. puffs a heavy breath out of his cheeks in anguish. The demons are stirred tonight. They are all hunting. The black zones are more dangerous than they have ever been. I did not think we would make it. I swallow, looking past him into the distant darkness. Are we safe? We are outside the border. We are safe. But others inside are not. Have the Black Suns ever been riled up like this before? No. I do not know how long it would last. I can imagine what we did, what he just went through. Running from whatever horrors were hunting him, carrying me all the while. There's a pause. My apprehension gives way to a stomach boiling, to stomach boiling guilt. Did Bite and I stir the Black Suns up? How? I did not stay to find out. I only ran. He tried to warn me. He said there'd be consequences for digging too deep. He was right. I'm sorry, I just wanted... I know, Alex. You wanted answers. He fixes me with a pointed look. We are black runners, yes. But even we must treat the black zones with respect. Knowledge is dangerous. Always tread carefully. Somberly, I nod at him. Thanks for saving me. He finally looks back at me and smiles. He exhales and I feel the, rel and I feel the relief in his breath. You are okay. I'm okay. His face hovers just above mine. His expression softens. Suddenly, I feel something brush against my hand. I look down and see his upturned paw flexing ever so slightly, waiting to be joined with my own. Alex, I am happy that you are okay. <laughs> Thanks, I am happy that, um, that you are happy. Then, as I move to clasp my fingers with his, he flinches and pulls away. No! What? What, what was that? That was weird. Okay. He pulls up to my feet. He pulls me up to my feet. We must go to the chief. We must warn her that the black zones have been provoked. The borders are unsafe for all. You can walk? Yeah, I can walk. Okay. He gently guides me by my shoulder. I turn, taking in the night sky and the dark mountain peaks on the horizon. Side by side, wordlessly, we start walking home beneath the night sky. We've been silent for some time. Loken is gazing joylessly at the ground in front of him. My head is buzzing. I should be worried about the Black Zones. I should be stirred by our discovery. Instead, I'm just thinking about him. Why is there this horrible tension between us? We keep having these warm, heated moments. They're starting to feel natural and right, but they don't last. What's going on? You are my acolyte. What? You are my acolyte. Okay. Is he rejecting me? That's his excuse? I, um... Tell me of what you found in these memory boxes with Bite. I don't answer. Why is he changing the subject? We're obviously attracted to each other. Or are we? Am I misinterpreting him? Loken. No. Alex, tell me of the memory boxes. I grimace. I'm too tired, and we're nearly back at the lodge. I'm not going to push him. Well, we found something. Abide doesn't know what it is, though. He thinks it's an algorithm. I do not understand. Like, it's a piece of software. It does something like a tool. We don't know what its purpose is. 
a byte is going to try and figure it out, but it'll take a while. He's missing half the data. Hmm. We have time. The indulgence is tomorrow. We must attend. I remember something. What's Soul Creek? He frowns at me, but doesn't break his walking pace. Explain. It's related to the algorithm we found in... Loken! Taki. Fucking hell, finally! The badger, bad, the, five, the honey badger sprints towards us from Loken's lodge. Her eyes are wide in alarm. Something's wrong. Taki, tell us what is wrong. I immediately think of the agitated black zones. A bunch of the youngsters have gone missing. We think they've snuck off to go zone baiting. No! They cannot do this, not now! My eyes widen in horror. The night of all nights? Taki catches our panic, tensing up. What's the deal? You told us they weren't that dangerous. Things are different tonight. They're in danger. Are there others looking for them? Javonia has her warriors scour in the woods. But they ain't sure where all the nearest bo they ain't sure where all the nearest borders are, so I came to find you. Alex, we will search the fences now. Lucan breaks into a mad sprint, back the way we came. I set off after him. He stops abruptly after a minute of mad dashing, heading whirling on the spot, head whirling on the spot. His fists are clenched, his teeth bared, and his eyes wide with alarm. Children! Tell me where you are! He bellows out to the darkness, but nobody responds. This is our fault! We provoke the demons if... We'll find them! The hound snarls. I sense his fear and his frustration. I feel it too. Suddenly his eyes widen with realization as he turns to me determinedly. Bite! Please! Tell me where they are! I nod. Enhance my hearing, Bite. Where are those kids? One moment. A second later, my senses become muffled. I shut my eyes, trying to find, trying to make my, trying to make sense as my hearing becomes a, mu a becomes a muggy blur. Then I hear it, voices wafting across the str the forest. Come on, it's your turn. I don't want to. Don't be a baby, baby, baby boy. A trio of distant children begin chanting "baby boy" in mockery. I'm not a baby. You have to stay there twice as long as I as I did to beat my record. I hear them. Bite. Where are those voices coming from? 72 degrees to your left. This way! This time, we, this time, with me leading the way, I follow Bite's guidance and break into another sprint. Loken's feet pound the forest floor behind me. Stupid kids. If anything happens to them, I'll never forgive myself. We find them at the fence. Three children are on the safe side of the barrier, leaning over it gleefully. I gape in horror when I see a boy standing behind the fence. Inside the black zone, he's facing us, but with his back to the darkness. A full ten paces from the fence. His arms are spread in a helpless crucifix position. Behind him behind him is a dark stretch of open grass and then an ominous forest. The other children cheer him on mercilessly. I don't want to play. You nearly beat my record. Come on, they're not real. I recognize the boy standing in the black zone. On my first day in the village, I saw him at the table in the hall. The white tiger. Logan bellows at the children and sprints out straight at them. Move away from the fence! The kids all jump, startled. They back away from the fence as Loken reaches them. The boy inside the border freezes in shock. Girls, back into the woods! Now! Get away from the border! It is not safe! Unnerved, the other children move towards the trees behind me and, and hide within them. Loken turns his attention back to the spooked tiger still standing in the perilous black zone. To me, boy! Quick! Come to- Loken suddenly stops dead. He stares past the boy and his eyes widen in terror. Stop! Boy! Be still! Be quiet! Do not move! I see it too. The dark woods far behind the boy rustle, then part. Something emerges, emerges and comes out of the black. Logan. I see it. Oh fuck, it's coming. We have to get him out! We'll cross the border and grab him, but they are drawn to sudden movement. Logan vaults over the fence. Must I stay put? He lands in the black zone and starts to creep, agonizingly slowly towards the boy. They're both in mortal peril. Alex, stay! Keep the boy still. Talk to him. If he looks or tries to run, it will take him. Behind him in the distance, the black shape is getting steadily closer. The kid remains frozen in his crucifix position, facing me with wide eyes. He quickly realizes what's happening as he tries to move for Logan. No, 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 kid, don't move. Look, just keep your arms spread, okay? You just need to look at me. Don't move. Don't look behind you. Logan's gonna get you out of there. Hey, what's your name, buddy? Logan takes a step closer. God, this fucking noise is unnerving the shit out of me. Good lord. The boy mumbles a fearful reply to me. A huge, twisted thing, taller than a wretched oak, steps from the darkness behind him. I finally see it. 
Milo. Hey, that's a great name. My name's Alex. I'm a black runner, just like Logan. God. He starts to cry. It towers behind him, leering down. The boy shuts his eyes, sobbing softly. It mimics his tears playfully. I am forced to listen, and my soul is scoured in grease, blood, and fear. I can't describe it. This horrifying conjunction of geometry, light, and hexagramic wires. Sawtooth steel billowing cables and shattered glass. It all bubbles and froths over this festering rape of technology. Gears flex, wires titter, and axles moan. It's churning, weeping, and gushing. Neither words nor imagination can properly portray this thing. A noxious, caustic stench burns my throat like maggot stuffed flesh. I gag and look away, unable to bear the sight. The thing twitches in spoiled glee. Look, it takes another step. He's covered only he's covered only half the distance. The demon ignores him entirely, only towering behind the terrified boy. Milo, I know you're scared. I, I am too, but just just ignore those sounds. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> Stop! Don't look! Look at me, Milo! Me! Eyes on me! You're doing great. Just keep still. Come on, Logan! Look, it takes another step. He's close enough to grab it. Just ignore it, yeah? Look at me. You're fine. You're gonna be... Logan! With the boy in his grasp, Logan leaps back over the fence and into safety. The demon has already gone. What? Why did you scan it? I couldn't. I tried. I'm shaking. I feel sick. I fall to my hands and knees, dry heaving. <sighs> Alright, guys. I'm all puzzled right here. I need to catch my breath. My lungs are out of air right now. Alright, guys. I'm gonna... Oh man, oh my god, what a terrifying episode. Um, alright, um, happy Christmas Eve everybody, happy holidays, um, oh lord, that was terrifying. Man, the noises in that were horrifying. What kinds of fucking machines are these? Oh my god, are these infested with the scrap code from 40k? For those of you who don't know, scrap code is... Binary code that has been infected with cha with chaos. That is as crazy as it fucking sounds. It is code that has been infected with chaos. Yeah. It's nuts. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!